Hey there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Today I am doing Off the Board with Pineapple Papers, where we use a Pinterest pin as inspiration, and then we create a layout. So my inspiration is this beautiful rainbow of tags, and those are created using paint chips. And so I decided to go ahead and use paint chips as well. And I've had these sitting on my desk for quite a while, and I decided I might as well go ahead and use them. I'm using a Stamping Up Punch where uh, any two inch piece of paper will fit into it and you just chomp off the top and it creates that tag look for it and so I really like that and I'm thinking I'm going to use this photograph of me at Disneyland and in the background it has one of the characters from inside out and a big rainbow uh, I don't end up using that so spoiler alert um, <laughs> I will switch out and use a different photograph I'm using these dilutions paints um, I am using the regular paint, not the shimmer paint. And then I am marking kind of where the center of each tag is with my pencil onto my blue tape there so that I know kind of where I want the spray to go. And I start out by putting it onto some packaging and then letting it run onto the paper. The paper is gessoed so that the water um, or the paint will flow right down uh, and trickle it doesn't just sink right in it just trickles down to wherever it wants to go basically and then I decide you know what I'm gonna need more paint I don't just want one line and so I decide to spray it right directly onto the paper and there's a lot of overspray and I don't really mind that too much at the end um, everything comes out fine uh, but if you don't want that much overspray, um, you know, maybe you might want to put it on in a different fashion than how I put it on. And I am using my water bottle to kind of direct the paint as um, into the area that I want it. And the blue and the green got mixed up there, so I'm going to sop that up, and then I'm going to add a little bit more blue to that. And you can see uh, my water is kind of making the paint flow where I want it to go. So if you want your paint in a certain direction or your mist to go in a certain direction, I highly recommend using some water, either in a water bottle like I am, or you could even paint it on with a paintbrush ahead of time and then drop the color into it, and it should follow that, that line of water that you have created. So I'm just checking to make sure everything is where I want it there and I am trying to pick up a little bit of the overspray on the blue and that does work to some extent um, it, it does fine for the purpose of this layout um, I'm not trying to have it look professional or anything so uh, it works out okay and I do have my paper gessoed it's just plain old regular cardstock that is gessoed and so that allows the the water and the paint to flow on the page. If I had used paper that was not gessoed, it would have just soaked right into it. So you either need to gesso or use like watercolor paper if you want that flow to happen. Um, now I have my my Catherine Pooler stamps, and I'm doing a tone on tone stenciling technique here. I'm using a Paige Evans heart stencil and I am using the life-changing brushes basically to stencil on um, the same color over each of those lines of paint. So it's not really bold. You can see it mostly in the blue and the orange when everything's finished. Um, it's more obvious there. You can see it in the other areas as well, but it's most obvious in those two colors. And I start out with a dark blue here, and it's really bold. And the reason I'm starting way up there is because that's the area that's going to get covered by the tags. So I wanted to test it, and I end up using a little bit lighter of a blue, and it still shows. It's still very vibrant. The Catherine Pooler ink is really bold and, and bright, and I really love it. And it worked perfectly for this. I didn't want anything that was... Um, I didn't want the hearts to be too 
bold and stand out more than the rest of the layout. That wasn't really the focal point. I just wanted to have a little bit of detailing in there. So that's why um, I went with something that's really like tone on tone and blends fairly well. And if you're wondering why I'm working on my desktop instead of on a the foam board that I normally work on um, is I filmed this before I actually created the foam board and so um, yeah so now I would have done it on foam board because then it frees up my desk when everything is drying and I can work on something else okay so I've got a white border all the way around and I'm gonna trim that off at some point that is where the tape had uh, was adhered to the paper so it does leave that white frame around it. If you don't want that, trim it off and then back your entire layout um, with some other color of cardstock or whatever. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay out my, my paint chips where I want them. And you can see I switched photos. It's a photo of my grandson at the park. And um, it has a lot of these colors in it because he's at this... Uh, it looks like a giant abacus. Um, it's not really a full abacus, but it has like these things that they can play with. The, they can spin on the pole and everything. And so it's got a lot of the colors in it. And then the poles themselves are the green and the yellow. And I kind of tried to keep those poles lined up with the green and the yellow tags. And then because I didn't really look at my photo in advance, I needed to make my green tag a little longer because it was tucked too far behind my photo. And you can see there now my yellow tag's a little bit too short because I had cut it. And though, so I am going to um, do a little bit of surgery and add it right back because the photograph, I don't want it all the way to the edge of the paper. I want it to have a little bit of that tag showing on the left hand side. So I had to add that back. Now I am kind of testing out what papers I want under this and I am trimming it off like I said. And I'm going to I'm going to try a couple of different papers. So I start with black, which I like. But then I thought, well, let, what does it look like just on um yellow and some other patterned papers? So the yellow, that is a patterned yellow, it has little white hearts. I've tried several of these papers. I end up going back to the black, and I always like the black with bold colors because it kind of gives your eye that place to rest. So when people talk about white space or um, a place for your eye to rest, they're not talking about necessarily a space that is white on your paper. It just gives where you're, there's not a lot of detail. It's just some place for your eye to um, not have to take in a bunch of detail, I guess is my way of explaining it. So I think I'm going to use this blue. I don't end up using the blue. I end up with black. And I don't know when I change that out, but I will change it out. <laughs> or maybe that is black and it just looks blue on screen. Um, anyway, so I have pulled out a bunch of stuff from Chamel's collections. And if you know me and my channel, I am doing a lot of most of my grandson's albums in her collections. And so I've got this um, holographic foil that says Everyday Adventures. And... Uh, these things are from a lot of different collections. So I've got some pieces from Go Now Go. I believe that little tree is from Go Now Go. And then the rainbow paintbrush is from um, Box of Crayons. The, I'm going to add those foiled butterflies. Those, I believe, are from Head in the Clouds. Anyway, it's a lot of holographic foil, which is also kind of like really bright um, but there's no color involved so I thought you know what I think it could work <laughs> and then I added this little tag at the top that says rainbow possibilities and it's gonna have a holographic foiled 
white butterfly there and a little holographic foiled star next to it. And then the puffy rainbow, I will use that at the bottom of the of the photograph. I really like how that looks as well. Um, and you can see the things that I've pulled out to the right there. I thought I was going to try and do more tone on tone embellishments like green on green so I had that green balloon and such but then you know what I decided there's so much color going on in here I'm just gonna leave it with these simple holographic foiled elements and not add a bunch of different colored items so I did a lot of like sitting around looking at it thinking about it and trying to figure it out um, I do like how it looks in the end, but it wasn't the most simple layout for me to make because um, there's there's a lot of color. And not that I'm afraid of color because I'm sure you've seen my other layouts if you watch my channel. Um, I do a lot of colorful stuff, but I was just trying to like figure out how much is too much and I just didn't want to overdo it. So then I created this little shelf for the rainbow to live on and the rainbow has holographic foil um, glitter inside and so it kinda goes with everything else that's on the layout already and let me tell you a little bit about off the board so this month Crystal over at Pineapple Papers is doing an, a layout every day on her channel and she is pulling something from Pinterest every day and using that as her inspiration so she's got various people playing along all month with her um, and that those people will change throughout the month and um, I today I'm playing along with a bunch of other people and I will play along again um, probably in the next week or two weeks so uh, go check out all of those people check out everybody listed below I will list their channels below so that you um, can easily find them and uh, go find some inspiration on your Pinterest board and um, see what you can come up with. I like to try and come up with things that are not necessarily scrapbook related and turn it into a scrapbook page. Um, if you want to use a sketch or another layout and scrap lift it, that works too. Uh, so I do, I've done that on occasion and uh, probably will do that again. But, um, you know, we all have Pinterest boards and we haven't don't use them for a whole lot, or at least a lot of us don't. Um, so it's time to get using them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for subscribing if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, I'd love for you to join me. And um, if you'd give me a thumbs up down below, I'd appreciate that too. The close-ups are coming in just a moment.